Alright, so in today's lecture we're going to look at the uh, lasso and elastic net models and compare them to Ridge and just uh, take a look at how we will go about fitting these models in R um, and how we can understand some of the differences between these models and, and the typical Ridge that we've looked at so far. Uh, okay, so we'll load our, our normal libraries like usual and then we will uh, read in our data set. So here I'm just going to pull in the same forecasting data set that we've been looking at so far. Let's filter to just those 10,000 rows uh, and then have some of these forecasting variables that we created like the lagged sales quantities and those kinds of things uh, as well as all the price information and stuff. Um, okay, so now uh, I want to do the same kind of thing that we did with Ridge. So we'll go through and we'll just look at one particular storm, one particular brand. In this case I'm just picking 21 and 6 for the store and brand combination, same thing that we did with Ridge. Uh, and then if you remember with Ridge, we had to separate the uh, target, so the sales quantity from the rest of the data set. So we'll do the same thing here. I'm going to extract the sales quantity as a vector now, and then I'm going to remove all of these uh, all of these features that are going to be the same in the data set or constant across this particular data set because uh, we're just looking at one store and one brand. Um, and then if we look at the lagged sales quantity, remember that there's always going to be NAs at the beginning. Depending on how large your lag is, it will be more or less numbers or more or less observations here. Uh, so we're going to need to remove those observations for Ridge. So I will do that. And then we'll also need to update our sales quantity vector by removing the first two observations there as well. Uh, okay. So now, fitting a lasso model is actually very similar to fitting a ridge model. We use the same function, uh, we follow pretty much the same process as before, the only thing we need to change is this. So now we want alpha equal to 1 instead of alpha equal to 0. And if we do a quick check of the documentation here, in case you forget which is which, you can always look in here and you can see that this is the penalties that they're using for the GLMNet model. So if alpha is equal to 1, then that means that that is going to give us a penalty that's just the 1 norm, which uh, in mathematical terms, the 1 norm is the sum of the absolute values. The 2 norm here is what they're writing, uh, and that is the, or the squared 2 norm is the sum of the squares. So uh, if alpha equals 0, then clearly we're going to get a ridge regression model. If alpha equals 1, we're going to get a lasso regression model. Uh, and then, of course, alpha in between gives us a mix or gives us the elastic net. Uh, okay, so all we have to do is just set alpha equal to 1, and we run this, and we get our lasso model. And we can do the same things that we did before with ridge. We can look at the lasso, or the lambda, which gives us the, the smallest error. Um, oops, sorry. We can look at the lambda that gives us the best error, um, and we can plot this model. And here we see that uh, for large lambda values, we don't have any change. And then as we start to change the lambda value, we see a rapid drop in our root mean squared error or our mean squared error. Uh, and then the best one, the best values are, are chosen, either this one or this one, depending on if you want one stern deviation above the best or the best observed. Um, all right, so we'll take the one stern deviation above the best as our lambda value, so 79. And then I'm going to extract the lasso coefficients here. And we'll take a look at these a little bit more in depth later, but we're just following the same process that we have so far. Um, OK. Now we'll fit the elastic net model. And, and I shouldn't say the elastic net model. I should say an elastic net model, because we could also vary alpha and pick a whole range of different models here. But I'm just going to pick alpha equal to 0 0.5 to kind of get the one that's maybe the most in between the lasso and the ridge. Uh, so I'll fit this model. We see that we get a different lambda value here. That's that's fine. That should be expected. Uh, when we generate a plot of it, we see that it looks very similar to the lasso. We don't really see a lot of differences here, um, but if we did an in-depth comparison, there probably would be some. Um, all right, so let's continue. We'll extract the coefficients, uh, same way as we did with ridge and with lasso before in this lecture. Uh, and then we're going to fit the ridge model. The ridge model we just set alpha equal to zero. And now we see we have a very different uh, penalty term here. 
and we can generate a plot and you see that at the beginning uh, when lambda is the largest here we don't even have any we don't have any kind of constant model before we drop we're already starting to to do some regularization um, that's okay so we'll, we'll extract those coefficients as well and then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of these coefficients together in a data table so that we can take a look at them uh, I'm also going to add the feature name so that this is maybe a little easier to look at um, so we can look at for example these weak features and you see that uh, the ridge model gives a coefficient to every single one of them whereas the lasso and elastic net don't pick up on as many features. Remember, one thing we expect with the lasso is that it's going to filter out some of the features which it finds to not be as useful, and in this case we see that. Uh, elastic net is a, a bit of a mix between the two, so we see that it's removed some of them, but not all of them. It's kept a little more than the, than the lasso model did. And as you kind of scroll up through this, you see a lot more zeros on the left, in the leftmost column, uh, and no zeros in the rightmost column. Um, and then the middle column should be kind of a mix of the two, maybe a few more zero, a few less zeros in the lasso model. Okay, but um, it might also be useful to understand what these coefficients look like. So let's uh, let's take a let's generate a plot of them. And so what I'm doing here is I'm plotting the features on the y-axis, and then I'm plotting the value of the coefficient assigned to that feature on the x-axis and then we have different plots for lasso, elastic net, and ridge. Um, now in this case the actual value of this coefficient kind of depends on the feature itself because if we're looking at price per ounce those features are take on really small values, values around 0 0.01 or 0 0.05 and so we would expect to have larger coefficients in order to make those features kind of correlate well with uh, sales quantities. Uh, whereas with price we would need maybe smaller features to get the same effect or with lagged kind of variables we would need even smaller features to get the same kind of effect since these variables take on much larger values. So in this plot we can only kind of see a subset of the data. So the first thing I'm going to do here is actually zoom in and, and look at different kind of chunks of this plot because that might be more meaningful. So if we look at the price per ounce variables or features, we can see that, uh, remember we chose we chose product number six, so in all three cases we assign weights to product number six, and you see that with the ridge model, like we saw before, we get kind of, we get some estimates for everything, whereas with ridge, or sorry, with lasso, it drops out a lot of those features, and it's kind of interesting because it gives a much larger weight to this one variable, or one feature, than the other two models do, uh, and it also removes all the other ones. So it's almost like Lasso is saying, I only really care about the price for product number six, and then maybe one, two, three competitors, and that's all that, that really I need to build a nice model. Whereas with Ridge, it's saying, let's, let's build a, a good model by taking a combination of all of this competitor price information and, and using them in different ways. You know, some may be very little, have very little influence, and some may have more but it's saying that the best model that it can find is using a combination of all of these other ones. Um, now again, the one that's right uh, really depends on your problem and, and also looking at cross-validation folds and which one generalizes the best. But in this case, they both seem like they're taking reasonable approaches. Uh, it could also be, and I think we'll see a little later that it is the case, that uh, the price per ounce feature is getting picked up more by lasso because it's not assigning any weight to the actual price features that we have in here, the, like price 1, price 2, price all the way up to price 11. Um, and like we saw, like we kind of mentioned before, lasso will tend to pick out just one variable from a group of correlated variables and just assign all the weight to that one. Um, and so it's not likely to give any weight to the price variables if it gives some weight to the price per ounce variable. Um, Okay, so let's continue. Let's take a look at those other ones now, the price features. And you see that, yeah, we have that effect where Lasso is assigning n very little weight to these different features here. Um, whereas the elastic net models and the ridge models are assigning some weight here. Uh, it's interesting because now you can really see a differentiation between Lasso, elastic net, and ridge. The Lasso model, like we've been saying, eliminates a lot of the features from the, from the model. Elastic Net eliminates some features from the model, so it doesn't keep nearly as many as the Ridge model does, but it doesn't just pick up on one, 
one variable when we look at a group of correlated variables like lasso. So, for example, with the product price number six, um, lasso used just the price per ounce feature, whereas ElasticNet used the price per ounce and the price feature, and Ridge did the same thing. But then ElasticNet is also assigning zero coefficients to these other features that it's finding not to be very useful. Uh, okay, so we can look at the deal and featured variables. Um, this isn't really too interesting. You see that all three models didn't really pick up on the feature or on the deal variable, and they all picked up on the feature variable. All right, nothing really to see there. If we look at the lagged variables, we also see that the models perform fairly similarly. Ridge picked up on a few more features than the other two, but really the results are are pretty constant, pretty much the same as same between all three models. And then if we look at the weak features, these features were supposed to capture some kind of like overall trends and, and patterns in the data set. We see that the Ridge model used these features quite a bit. Um, well, not quite a bit. These coefficient values are, are still fairly small, so it's not really using them much. Um, but Ridge picked up on these quite a bit more than ElasticNet and Lasso, where we don't see anything really. So these are probably zeros here. Um, yeah, so hopefully that gives you a bit of a sense of uh, how these models are, are going to work and what kind of results you'll get out of them. In the next lecture we'll look at some cross-validation and how to choose which model is better, uh, but this gives us some nice intuition around what those models are doing.